I am confident that this video is going to ruffle feathers. But you know what? I decided that God didn't put me on this earth so that I could leave everyone's feathers perfectly intact. I am here to help educate and support and pull you out of whatever rut you are in. So today I'm talking about the real reason you're not getting bookings. And before you assume that the fact that I'm making this video is confirmation that bookings are an issue, just, just hold it right there, okay? I think that we tend to have confirmation bias. So for example, I know not everyone's going out and about right now, but let's suppose that you just bought a new car. And now whenever you're driving, you see that model of the car everywhere you go. You are just acutely aware of that car, that model, right? I think the same thing happens with not getting bookings. Okay. I think that tends to happen with that too, that if you're not getting bookings, all of a sudden you see posts about not getting bookings everywhere. You see videos, you see everything everywhere. Oh my gosh, what is up with these bookings? Okay. So this video is not to confirm that there is an issue with bookings because truly, get ready to have your feathers ruffled, not everyone is struggling with bookings and that's okay, but I want to help you so that you're no longer struggling with bookings. So let's talk about the three lies that I believe are the real reason that you're not getting bookings because you are buying into at least one of these lies, okay? And I want you to ditch that lie and come with me and start getting the bookings. Okay, so the first lie that I hear that is holding you back is VIP Kid doesn't care if I'm successful, they want me to fail. And yes, I have heard this before, <laughs> more than a few times. Okay, I would just like to say, that's ludicrous. My friends, that is just ludicrous. VIP Kid doesn't want to be successful, what? They would not have invested money in you getting hired if they didn't think that they would see a significant return on their investment. Again, you are an investment. Just think about all the hands that had a part in you getting hired, right? Okay, first of all, there are a lot of people behind the scenes in VIP Kid, people setting up the IT to make everything work, right? Then there was somebody uh, reviewing your demo, whether you did the smart demo recorded interview, whatever, somebody doing that. There was at least one mock class mentor devoted to you. And then there were people reviewing your profile. They sent off your profile. Uh, they sent off your information to do a background check, right? There were so many people who had a hand in getting you hired. So many people, lots of money, right? They've spent a lot of money on you. <laughs> so the idea that they don't want you to be successful, just it just doesn't make sense. And honestly, VIP Kid can't really deliver on its promises to parents without teachers. Teachers are the powerhouses in VIP Kid. Yes, it's true that VIP Kid has a lot of additional things that they offer to the parents, like there's a digital library, right? And there are different tools that they can use at home. But the main draw to VIP Kid is the teachers. You are really, really important to their business plan. And I really believe that they don't just want to get a return on their investment. They don't just want to make exactly what they put into you. They want you to be wildly successful because when you are successful, VIP Kid is successful. Okay? So the idea that they don't want you to be successful or that they just strung you along and you're not going to get any bookings, that's just ludicrous. I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. And you need to stop believing that because it's affecting the way that you go about everything. Okay? Your mindset is the biggest thing that is going to hold you back. So don't let it. Okay, number two, lie number two is there are too many teachers and not enough students in VIP kit. All right, so this is probably the most common lie that I hear and that I see posted all over the place. And again, I take you back to that example I said earlier with confirmation bias, right? If you think that you're going to find something let me back up. If I believe something, any new information I get is confirmation of what I believe, right? So if I believe that there aren't enough bookings to go around and I see somebody post, hey, I don't have enough bookings, that just confirmed my suspicion, right? Whether it's true or not. And let me just back up for a second on that point because, whew, man, I'm getting fired up now. <laughs> something that really grinds my gears, and I'm a pretty level person, but something that really grinds my gears is when I see online that people are 
sharing their struggles with getting bookings, right? And they're saying, I'm doing this, that, and the other thing, and I'm, I'm working really hard and nothing's working for me. And then people come to this person's rescue and say, oh, you're right, you deserve book bookings, that's so horrible. But I know that person's backstory and I know that person isn't actually doing everything that person is saying, or maybe that person missed five classes and failed to, failed to submit any kind of documentation. I know a lot of the backstory a lot of the times. And so it really bothers me when this information, just incomplete lies are just thrown out there. And these vulnerable people who are really feeling down about themselves because they're not getting the bookings that they want, they see these incomplete stories, they buy them, they think that they're fool and true, and then they start seeing themselves in that lie. Oh, don't do that, please don't do that. Okay, so the idea that there are too many teachers and not enough bookings, that's just not true. It's really not true. Now, what is true is that bookings ebb and flow, especially for new teachers. It can take time for your bookings to grow, truly. I'll get back to that later. Um, but the idea that there aren't enough no, there are so many. Do you know how many kids there are in China? <laughs> they just need to get more students on board and they're constantly getting more students on board. Um, so I want to give you an analogy because I don't know about you, but I find analogies to be super helpful. So let's suppose that in your town, wherever you live, there are two new restaurants that just popped up right next to each other. One is a burger joint and one is a vegan sandwich restaurant, right? A vegan sandwich shop. So burger joint, vegan sandwich shop, right next to each other. They open at the same time. Let's say that that vegan sandwich shop is way more successful than the burger joints, okay? Way more successful. Why do you think that is? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know enough about these restaurants. But really, if the, if the burger joint owner right, looks at the owner of the vegan sandwich shop and says, you're taking all my customers. There aren't enough customers to go around. How ridiculous of a thought is that? Do you think that all the people who are getting food at the vegan sandwich shop would equally be as interested in going to the burger joint? No, different people are attracted to different things. That's why when people say that there's too much competition or it's oversaturated, it drives me crazy. That's just not true. You just need to make yourself stand out more so that you attract the right students for you. I don't think it's a competition issue. It's a matchmaking issue. You need to adjust your approach because right now you're not specific enough. You're not attracting the right people. You are not the burger joint guy attracting the burger joint customers. You're trying to attract the wrong customers. Stop doing that. <laughs> I have another video that I also recorded and I'm posting soon. Um, actually, I'll post it today. How about that? Um, that is about how to adjust your profile to attract your ideal students. So definitely check that out at the end of this video. I'll pop it up at the end. Um, but that really is the issue. I truly believe that there are plenty of bookings to go around. You're just not attracting the right students for you. So. That's probably my favorite point, but there's still one more. So our third lie is other teachers get booked right away, so I must just not be cut out for a VIP kid. Okay. Well, let me remind you that you were cut out for a VIP kid or you would not be hired, right? It's not easy to get hired by VIP kid. It takes work and they don't let just anybody become a VIP kid teacher. Remember, they want that return on investment. They want someone who's going to be successful so that they can be successful too. So um, the idea that other teachers' success somehow makes your lack of success your fault, I mean, that's just, okay, let's, let's break this apart a little bit. I think, that the main reason that people compare themselves to other people is they're, they're just looking for information, right? And then they get sucked into this trap. And I really, really wish that I could just take down videos that have titles like, uh, how I got fully booked on my first day or in my first week and how you can too. I don't like that those videos exist. I don't think they're realistic for the public. I don't. Every single person's situation is unique. So I don't think it's fair to say, if you do X, Y, and Z, I guarantee you'll be successful too. Guess what? You don't know which types of students that person wants to attract, right? You don't know everything about that teacher. You cannot just one size fits all success. 
for VIP Kid. That's not how it works. So if you have bought into that lie that other teachers are immediately successful, I'm not immediately successful, so I must be the issue, you need to stop that. <laughs> you just need to stop right now. And maybe the best way to do that is to stop just lingering on social media so much, right? Stop the comparison game. Now, I would just like to leave you with this thought. So I grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yes, it's Lancaster, not Lancaster. Oh, it's Lancaster. And if you know anything about Lancaster, it's probably that there are Amish people that live there. There's a high population of Amish people. And Amish people, practicing Amish people, do not drive. They have a horse and buggy. And their horses have blinders on, okay? Now, I want you to put on your VIP kid blinders, okay? That doesn't mean that you can't look into things from time to time, but you want to put your blinders on. Don't get distracted by the drama that you see on Facebook or these clickbaity titles that you see on YouTube, right? I know this one's maybe a little clickbaity, but I wanted to get this message out there. Don't look at videos about how you get your first 50 bookings in the first three days. Just don't, just don't buy into it, okay? Put your blinders on. I think those horses wear blinders so that they're, well, first of all, they're probably just spazzy and would get distracted with their peripherals, but also they don't need to be looking at what the other cars and horses on the street are doing. They don't need to be looking at that. As soon as they would look away, if they didn't have blinders, they would start slowing down, right? But if you've got your blinders on, all clear ahead. You can keep making progress. So stop looking around, stop slowing yourself down, and remember that everyone's situation is different, okay? And you can do this. Just stop buying into the lies. Stop it. <laughs> all right. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it with your friends. And if you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell. And then um, one more thing. I would love to hear in the comments below, what lie have you believed in your life that you're no longer believing? All right. Thank you so much for being here and best wishes. You will get through this. It's all going to be okay. Thanks. Bye.